This week in Football Mundial, we travel to Torshaven to meet the goalkeeper who's hung his hat up for good. We visit one of the most unusual grounds in the world as European football comes to the Faroe Islands, David versus Goliath. We profile the hard man of Australian football and find out why he's making temperatures rise down under in his bid to make football the number one sport. And we go to Argentina. It's a million miles from the Faroes as we look at Argentina's number one football magazine. The Faroe Islands. With a population of only 42,000, Denmark's tiny principality survives mainly on its income from fishing. But when it comes to football, the Faroes are a small fish in a big sea. It was in 1990 that they first made an impact on the international scene and their bobble-hatted goalkeeper hit the headlines. It was their first ever Euro qualifier and they were playing comparative giants Austria. Jens Martin Knudsen made a dream debut in goal and the Faroes went on to stun the world. Knudsen's hat became a symbol of hope for every David facing up to his Goliath. The Faroes Football Association was formed in 1979 and now boasts 26 clubs and up to 6,000 playing members. For the association president, the memory of the game against Austria remains as sweet now as it ever was. That was great but it was a bit of a surprise. It wasn't something we had thought would happen. But since then, you could say that it's been a bit difficult to live up to. Nevertheless, it was a great experience for the Pharaohs because it put us on the world map. They may be on the world map, but they're still hard to spot. And their next challenge in the European qualifiers is awesome. They face the might of Russia. That's a population of 148 million people against 42,000. In the first match, Russia won 3-0. The capital city of Torshavn is one of the smallest in the world, with only 17,000 people under the town's colourful roofs. The country's natural resources are utilised to the full in the most unexpected of places, with the abundance of grass providing an insulator from the icy winters. It rains for an average of 280 days every year in the Faroes, so grass grows thickly over the island's hilly slopes. But until recently, they had to play every international football match abroad as they lacked even one grass pitch. The constant wet weather and regular matches made surfaces unplayable. Instead, 22 AstroTurf pitches service the biggest sport on the island. But an hour's drive from the capital, on a hilltop in Toftir, is the nation's national stadium, the first to boast a grass pitch. There, a collection of fishermen, truck drivers and postmen are preparing to take on Russia. For goalkeeper Knudsen, it's a long way from the glory days of beating Austria. The hat has now disappeared, but he still loves to tell the story of it. Yeah, I think I got to tell the... When I was about 14 years old, I had a head injury. And the doctor told me a fortnight after that, that I had to play with a helmet on. But you can't really play football wearing a helmet. So to please him, I just put a hat on. Not far from Toftir National Stadium is the home where Knudsen grew up. It was in this house that Mrs. Knudsen made the bobble hat that made history and which her young son continued to wear long into his 20s. It was when he was about 12 years old. He had a small injury and he thought it would help to have a hat on. So he asked me whether I'd knit him one. And that's what I did. He believes in it, that's what I think. But I don't know why he stopped using it. I really don't know why. I've asked him and he hasn't told me why. The question as to why Knudsen no longer wears the famous hat has caused much debate. At the First Division Club HB, there's a man who thinks he knows the answer. As usual in the Faroes, he's multi-skilled, both under-16 coach and groundsman at the club. But it was in his role as referee that he witnessed a strange incident. 
bolden come in or the ball comes in and Jens Martin puts up his hands for the ball like this. But he loses both the ball and his hat. I looked at him, but he was more interested in getting the hat back on his head than holding on to the ball. And the danger wasn't over because another player came in and put the ball into the back of the net. He's always been very fond of that hat, and still is. Maybe the real reason for Knudsen giving up his hat is the increasing seriousness with which the Pharaohs are approaching their game. Last year, ex-Danish international and European Footballer of the Year Alan Simonsen was employed as coach and has gone about restructuring the national squad. Since I took over the team, we've changed a lot of the players. We're looking for more consistency than we previously had. It's to do with a certain style we want to adopt here. Our development has been fantastic. In the last year and a half, we've played a lot of positive football, and that's what we're going to do in the future. Of course, you need a lot of time to do this, but we're well on the way. The main problem with Faroese football is the lack of full-time professionals. Toddy Jonsson is the only player to have escaped amateur status, gaining a contract with Danish first division side Lingby. The money just doesn't exist to support a professional league in these tiny islands.